It's time now for Social Square. This is a segment that takes place every Friday and allows us to discuss a wide range of topics. Today we want to look at traditional media versus digital media. I don't know how you term it. And um, sort of how digital media is taking over uh, in many spaces and the clash with traditional media as well. Can the two forms work together as well? And that's why this morning we are asking you, is digital media replacing traditional media or can they work well together? And we're putting that question up on the screen right now. Is digital media replacing traditional media or... Can they work well together? 2242 is the SMS line. The hashtag is Daybreak. And we have guests here very qualified and ready to tackle this topic uh, this morning. And we also expect you to weigh in on that as well. But I think Chad, the first question is definition. Yeah. Most of them may be more experienced than we are. Okay. So, we're gonna so you're going to give them a chance. And let them explain All right. the definition. Where do you start? <laughs> <laughs> start with Dr. Nancy Buka. And she'll introduce herself as well. And just try to define to us what traditional media and digital media is, what the difference really is. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Go right ahead. Okay, like thank, thank you, Trevor. And, and Waheega, this, you know, you've started off, this feels almost like a classroom, you know, where I'm supposed <laughs> to start with definitions. Uh, my name is Nancy Buka, and I'm the Director of Academic Affairs at uh, the Aga Khan University Graduate School of Media and Communications. So, um, I, I'll not be abstract or philosophical, but, you know, when you think about traditional media versus digital media, for me the greatest distinction is the tools that then you use to disseminate or share information. Uh, you know, so that in the traditional, what we are calling traditional legacy media, you're using, you know, your TV, your radio, your newspapers to share information. With the digital media, you know, you then have an advantage of, you know, using other platforms using apps, uh, you know, using what we, what we call social media to be able to uh, engage. The advantage that, that the digital media provides is, you know, audience engagement is a lot more proactive as opposed to, you know, the, the legacy or the, the traditional spaces that we are operating in. So um, the audience becomes a very integral part of content, uh, you know, right from not just receiving it, but being um, uh, active in terms of generating, you know, some of that content that they, you know, they are able to call you out almost immediately, you know, when, when, when they don't agree with what you've said or they have fact-checked or they have more information, mm -hmm. they are able to, you know, contribute a lot more proactively, um, you know, in, in, in that space and, and engage. The other advantage is that then it provides an opportunity for more players. And, you know, one of the things that I usually say is that, you know, uh, the digital revolution or disruption, and disruption here is not in the negative sense, but that it shifts the focus from, you know, just the linear way of communicating to a lot more involvement and democratizing the space so that even those who, you know, for some reason thought they would never have a voice you know are now um you know have a voice they have followers they have uh, you know they're able to influence they're able to uh it actually sounds like before that there was little or no democracy in this space. If, <laughs> well, if it is now being democratized well I, I mean a lot of it has got to do with you know the uh, the sort of gatekeepers and those that make decisions in a traditional space okay so if you're looking at uh, you know what goes out you know there's a whole team that looks at it that you know that agrees on where do we start what do we lead with you know what's prominent what's not true, you true. know so so uh it's 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 kind of like closed and we as audiences then receive what somebody else has decided that this is what we need to we, what this is what we need to but get what you're basically saying now is that it's changed but we, yeah it's it, it's now changed so that you know and, and it's, it's interesting even within the traditional media today there are certain stories that would be killed uh you know on the traditional space yeah. but you very quickly see it on social media you know so that's the democracy that, that i'm talking about that, that you're talking about yeah. I, want, I want to bring in michael and i want to ask him you're hearing about apps you're hearing about user-generated content. Were these terms that were used when, and you're still a media practitioner, but the time when we actively knew you on our screens day to day, would you have imagined that a day would come when an app would be more powerful than a, mi a microphone? First of all, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is an app? <laughs> um, it, it's an interesting question you ask because I happen to be in the media as the transformation or the switch was happening. Um, I recall being seated with, uh, with younger journalists, I think of, of your generation, and they were always on their phones. In fact, I might have it said, I didn't open my own Twitter account. I was told, Michael, you need a Twitter account. 
<laughs> and it, it was opened up by Edith Kimani, in fact. <laughs> so I say thank you to her and, and gaining all this understanding about exactly what's going on. Uh, we, when in radio, uh, way back in 19, should I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, For the benefit of, 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 of a few behind you, in, in the context. <laughs> way back in 98, going into 99, as I was heading the news department, we started the, the whole idea of SMS news. So that, that was disruptive then, you know, that you can send SMSs of breaking news. It was huge. Today, I mean, getting what's happening, as you said, it, it comes to you, you can get it everywhere, you can participate in saying what's happening. And, and before that wasn't uh, quite happening. I don't know if I, no, I yeah. answered your but question. What has that done to the agenda setting role of the media now? Because the stories are almost mm. run by what the people want rather than what the media practitioners think the people want. As Dr. Booker said, I think it's balanced things out. Yeah. Because before it was strictly a decision of that team, of that editorial team coming and saying what is important and trying to the best of their ability to see what would be of interest to the audience that they're serving. Yeah. Uh, today, you have a good clue just because of the feedback of the back and forth, the interaction of what your audience might be more interested in or not. Mm -hmm. Then on the other hand, if that decision by the editorial team seems not to pan out, it's out in the open. Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone else knows, but there's this big thing that happened. Yeah. Why don't I see it? Why am I not mm -hmm. seeing it on my screen? And, and I start thinking, what's the agenda? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring in Swale on this. Swale is also an anchor and an editor as well. How do you make the decisions based on what people want or what you think they should be told? Because there's a difference where the young people on social media are talking about something that happened, maybe a dog did something unusual, but you think the most important conversation now is the BBI. So how do you balance those two? <laughs> uh, thank you, Trevor. Uh, you didn't introduce me, of course. I did not introduce <laughs> 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 Babu. <laughs> this is Babu, yes. Uh, what I would say is that uh, tradition, traditional media versus digital. Uh, coming to a question, uh, long time we used to we used to do our stories using typewriters. Wow! And I don't think if any of you have seen one, apart <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe from Michael. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, we used to bang stories on typewriter. Yeah. And uh, send them to your editors using uh, fax. Uh, if you're in the field, you have to go to a landline public booth, telephone booth. You call your bureau or your head office. Uh, you request for a reverse call. <laughs> whereby if somebody denies you on the other end, that means your story is going to die because nobody's <laughs> going to pick that, that call. If they say, yes, we accepted the call, then you read your notes on your notebook. That is what you used to be called copy takers on the other end, who used to type what oh you are saying. Where there's a comma, you say comma. Where there's a full stop, <laughs> you say full stop, <laughs> like that until the end. But now, and uh, you don't have, uh, you know, we, people used to wait until in the evening to know what To be happen. properly updated. Yeah. Exactly, on the news or whatever. And you need to wait until tomorrow to know what is happening in the news. Book. But nowadays, you know, it's just where you are seated here, and I'm sure right now here, with these two young ladies here, they are tweeting or whatever they do with their phones to <laughs> tell the world that this is happening in the street. As someone who was trained in a traditional media <laughs> landscape, do you f ever feel threatened by this new wave of digital media not where, at all. where not apps not and podcasts? Not at all, because before, uh, after the advent of uh, the new media coming in, I trained myself, I enrolled myself for a course in uh, using a computer in some college. You saw the need? Mm. Yes, I saw the need that this thing is coming. And if you were used to doing your stories on a typewriter, <laughs> you're going to be left out. <laughs> I enrolled myself for a course in basic computer use. And of course with time, I think uh, I'm, I'm a guru in that. 
<laughs> okay. Let's bring in Glory and hear what you think about this. Because you are a YouTube content creator. Oh. No, I okay. Twitter. Yeah. Social media influencer. All right. And what is your assessment of the changing times? There is a huge change. Yeah. And as Dr. Luca said, the thing about now is that people, you get the feedback immediately. It's, you get to know what people want and you get yeah. to know it then and now. Um, currently, there's a huge issue and there's a hashtag, my always experience. Yeah. And it started here in Kenya, but now it's been taken up by other media houses in other countries. And now South Africa has joined the discussion. Nigeria has joined the discussion. Women are coming out and talking about how the, their experiences being with their own yeah. has. And yeah. I think it's important. I think it's important that we're not being dictated for what to consume. And we're not being told how to respond. People are giving their own personal experiences without fear. So let me ask you this: So are you are you a journalist or an activist or a sort of this new platform an can influencer. give an influencer? What does an influencer even yes. mean? I'm a social media influencer, so I just use my social media to voice my opinion and to get to get feedback from other people as well. Yes. So Michael this is based. Imagine that things like that would be happening. Is this, is this based on what they want? But Michael, you want to jump in? Yes, in terms of. Um, so social media influencer is, is now a role, Glory's yeah. role, and it has influence across borders, yeah? uh, globally. I just want to care, be careful and state that there are professions, yeah. and you know, professions are guided by codes of ethic, mm -hmm. ethics. And whilst it's fabulous, uh, the reach and the things that are happening, in the social media space, as, as Mark Zuckerberg called it, the fifth estate. The traditional media within the fourth estate are accountable, or ideally should be. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there's a place where I can complain about what you do or what you say. Yeah. Is the, does the same exist when I get into digital media? Okay. And how swift would it be? Now that, that's great, and I'm not trying to say everyone should be regulated, but I just want to say that there's a respect and a place for the professions. And just like uh, other professions started off with uh, no code of ethics and then matured and got into, I think we're, we're seeing a trend, hopefully. <laughs> You're using trendy words. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that you believe would lead to, and we have a regulator yeah. here with us, and we'll be introducing him shortly. But ha sorry, I know I interrupted you. Do you want to respond to what he said before you hand over the mic? Yes, um, I'd like to say that there are definitely regulations even on digital media. When um, I'll focus mostly on Twitter because that's what I use. That's the space you use. You'll find that you're able to report. You're able to report videos. You're able to report tweets. You're able to report accounts as well. So, and when you report, they ask you to fill in like a form to explain where the rules have been violated. And it asks you to tag some tweets and some videos of how regulations, maybe from your country or from your culture, it asks you is it race that has been violated, <coughs> is it gender that has been violated, is it individuality? And I feel like, yes, there is regulations and it's being handled. It's being handled. So, do you want to add, you want to, add to that? Sorry, we'll give you a chance to respond. Um, yes, I agree. The, although the problem with social media is it's a thin line. And you find that, for example, I'm on Instagram and on YouTube mostly. So you find that... We have every um, platform yeah. represented here this, <laughs> yeah. this morning. Okay, and you find that? <laughs> you find that um, someone will post a picture of you, infringe on your copyright, infringe on different regulations that are there. But it's hard for them to get, it's hard for you to get the results that you want. You want this person to take down your picture. Oh, you want to, okay, let's give you a different mic, go ahead. Yeah. You want someone to take down your picture, to take down um, certain things that they've said that are, ro are wrong, but it takes a whole process. And I think that's the problem with uh, digital media. Although there are those things that you can do so that you're protected and your rights are protected, but it's a bit more difficult than traditional media because I am also in traditional media um, as well. So I've seen the difference between the two. In traditional media, you'll, get your, you'll be told you can't play that kind of music here. You can't do X, Y, Z here. And you will be told, put that thing down right now. 
but with digital media it can't even it's take a blurry, month right, in yeah the boundaries and, and yeah the boundaries are a bit shaky and i think that's something that we need to change and like they say the internet never forgets even if you bring it down it's still somewhere milling around yeah yeah, yeah? people but will take screenshots yeah. will, people will screen record whatever video it was and it will still be out there somehow we live in the wild wild west is what it sounds like eric do you want to let's get a, a microphone to him Okay, so I think one of the main... Uh, and you could begin by introducing yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I have many thoughts. My name is Eric Mugendi. I am the managing editor of PESA Check, which is a verification and fact-checking initiative under Code for Africa. So I think one of the main changes that we've seen, because there's always this conversation that media, like all of a sudden we woke up and the media landscape had changed completely. But there's this constant innovation that's happening in the space. Like uh, I remember growing up and watching Michael and Swale on TV, and because uh, now I'm, you know, there's... Um, I hope you still watch Swale. I still do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Before you break his heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's, there's this generation that's basically grown up knowing that uh, the TV started at, at, uh, at four. And then Kufunga Kituo is at midnight. <laughs> and now we are the same ones who are like on Twitter getting our news like from these digital spaces. So the, the shift has been very quick, but it, it, it's still very, very manageable, I think, for mainstream media. Because these spaces can be very open and very democratic. So the, well, where we come in as fact checkers, and, uh, uh, because this is a, it's an occupation that didn't exist even like five years ago. Because the assumption here is that this is something that journalists would do anyway as part of a journalistic process. But because we're not getting our news from all sorts of different platforms, like for example, I found out that Safaricom has a new CEO from WhatsApp. I didn't get it from like a strap at the bottom news. of the screen. Yeah, yes. exactly. And uh, because the way these conversations are happening are just moving on to different platforms. Sometimes they're the same conversations, but now there's lots of different people instead of just one or two big players. So because of that, our, uh, our job becomes even more essential because we help the public make sense of what's being said in the, in the, in, in the media space. And then uh, one of the other things that we've seen is the way these conversations are happening in these closed spaces. Like uh, in my family WhatsApp group, for example, we can go and start discussing, like let's say, does beetroot cure cancer? <laughs> and uh, that's one of the main things that we try to tell them. Like, <laughs> you do not have, uh, like there's no scientific evidence for something, just go do a quick Google search and then find if there's any, any, any additional research on it. And then even if you feel in your heart of hearts that this is true, and someone else has proven that it's false, it doesn't make it true. But the way uh, some of these false stories are designed is and to videos. appeal to our own biases. Yeah. So if I think that something is true, uh, and uh, even though there's a ton of research that shows that it's false, as long as it appeals to my own biases, I will, I'm still very likely to share it co as uh, compared to something that disagrees with my beliefs, but is actually true. All right. Yeah. Okay. We have to take a quick break here. We'll come back with more. And also a regulator, Dr. Zekil Mutua is with us. He'll be joining us right after this break. We'd also like to hear what your thoughts are. Is the digital media replacing traditional media or do they work well together? That's the question we're asking you. 224222 is the SMS line at Citizen TV Kenya. At Trevor Mbijat, Wega Moura, Zinzi underscore K, use the hashtag Daybreak.